Welcome back, Mr. Kata, Mr. Kata. You have no idea what I'm doing, do you? <laughs> That's okay, no problem. It's an old TV show from the 70s. Welcome back, Mr. Cotter. And I was just basically trying to say, hey, glad to see you. Maybe I should have just said that. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Friday, August 26th. And what a Friday it was today, folks. It was bloody hell out there. A nuclear bomb exploding. <laughs> The major exchange took a serious, serious hit today. And all I can say is the OTC must have got lucky. We must have found cover because we did not get beat down as bad as they did. And that's good because that's what we like to look at on this show, OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have potential. Maybe they've got some momentum running on the charts. Maybe there's lots of buzz about them on the internet. Or maybe they just got some good news. Now, this is news I've been looking at over the last four to five days. The oldest is at the top, newest is at the bottom. Now, all of this news comes from the OTC market, and we also like to look at penny stocks. Now, yes, yes, all of that is penny stocks. Absolutely, positively, no bother about it. But a penny stock can be any stock under $5, and it doesn't matter where it's sold. So we could easily be looking at stocks on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ as well. Now, right now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. Folks, this is my number one go-to site whenever I do research on an OTC stock. This otcmarkets.com website is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all of that pertinent, important information we are constantly looking for. So if you're constantly going over to Google or anywhere on the internet searching for current information, you're wasting your time and you're probably frustrating yourself. Come on over here to OTC Markets, get it right the first time. Really, it's much, much easier. So let's take a look at how our OTC market fared today, considering there was a war right next door. Our dollar volume did not much increase. We are still under our average of 2.1 billion. We haven't hit that in about a week. Our share volume, we're still not back up over 10 billion. We've been over it a couple of times in the last couple of weeks, but we just can't seem to stay over it. And we've been under it now for a few days. The one thing that did go up was our number of trades. We have been hovering around 250,000 trades, even went down to 233 the other day. Today, we're up to 290. I'm not saying that's a party number or anything, but it's nice to see something going up. Now, even as slow as the market was today, there's always something to look at, and I've got a handful I want to share with you. Come on, let me show you what I got. Jumping right on into it then, the first stock we're going to take a look at caught my attention because it was catching the attention of other investors. I noticed this early today. This is ticker CLIS, Clickstream Corporation. Now, the funny thing is she hasn't got any catalyst today. She did have filing a few days ago and a news press a couple of days ago, but nothing today. So how did I know that the investors were interested in it early? Well, actually, I cheat. <laughs> I got another link here at this site here, current market right there. If you click that, it will take you to a page and it'll show you the most active stocks across the entire OTC market right up until that moment. Winners and losers. And ticker CLIS was in the winners column and showing a lot of trades were accumulating early. Now, this is one of the only sites I know that shows you how many trades a company is doing. It's great to see volume, but I want to know how many people put that volume on the board. The way I figure it, the more trades, the more people. And I'm looking for the crowd factor. I figure there's a bigger opportunity for me to make money if there's a lot of people trading that stock. And this one did. I think she finished today with 197 trades. So without Catalyst, she finished the day at 0 0.0285, almost three cents, with almost 150% gains without any Catalyst today. She is on the pink tier. She is current. She's got a verified profile and transfer agent. Those two green ticks I'm telling you to always look for and independent directors. You got to have those if you plan on uplisting. Doesn't matter to the QB, to the NASDAQ, wherever. If you're going to uplist, you must have independent directors. But if you don't have plans to uplist, you really don't need them. So maybe they have plans to uplist. So what does Clickstream do? Well, they tell us here that they are a technology company focused on developing apps and digital platforms that disrupt conventional industries. And they've got a few apps that they're working on right now and they have out there. WinQuick, 
Hey Pal, Nipter, and Joey's Animal Kingdom. And real quick, so you know what each one is all about, WinQuick is a free-to-play synchronized mobile app and digital gaming platform designed to enable users to have fun interact and compete in order to win real money and prizes. Now what they actually devised WinQuick for was for people who jump on sites for less than 20 seconds and end up leaving. It was the hook. This was a way to get people to stay on the site longer. Now they seem to have some problem going on with WinQuick right now. I saw an article about the SEC getting in touch with them about some sort of hack problem. I don't understand it. So temporarily it is off the market, but they are planning on getting it back up. They also have HeyPal, which is run through their subsidiary Nebula Software Core. This is a language learning app that focuses on language exchanging between users around the world. So you're actually learning how to speak another language just by being on social medias, being on forums, talking to people who speak a different language. One of the big ones they've got working on right now is Nifter. That is run through their subsidiary Rebel Blockchain Inc. Now here they tell us it is a music NFT marketplace that allows artists to create, sell, and discover unique music and sound NFTs on the Nifter marketplace. Well, the fact is they've expanded that now. They're going to regular NFTs. They just made a contract with the Stan Lee estate. I don't know if you know who Stan Lee is. He's the cartoonist that made Marvel comic books famous. He's the one that creates and invents these superheroes. And they've got a lot of start work for St Spider-Man and an other superheroes. They've even got some collaborations between uh, Charles Schultz and Stan Lee, where Spider-Man and Snoopy are together in the same picture. And that's going to be an NFT. And that's got nothing to do with music. And then their last app is Animal Kingdom, which is for children. It is an entertainment and education app that takes kids all around this amazing planet to see incredible animals and creatures. So that's the business of the company. So what was the relative volume around them today? Well, let's see. Normally they do 533,000 shares, about a half a million. Today they did about seven times as much, 3.6 million shares. Share structure. Let's hope for a low float. Eh, it's an average float, 243 million, call it a quarter billion shares. Doesn't sound too small when you say it that way. Financials, I don't believe the company has any revenues coming in at all. We've got nothing on the annual and we have nothing on the quarterly. So why it doesn't say shell risk or shell company over here, I don't know. It should say something since they've got no money coming in. Disclosures got anything current over here. Of course, all of their financials are going to be current because they're current. And no, not really. Financials are the most current thing we have. So let's go take a look at that news. So as I mentioned, the company did have a news press come out just a couple days ago. And as you can see, NFTs are in the news quite often with them. This is going back to the beginning of the year. And the news that just came out recently came out on the 24th. They tell us here that Clickstream Corp announced today that its subsidiary, Rebel Blockchain, also known as Nifter, has launched the very first talent agent program in the NFT sector. The newly rebranded Nifter debuted as the first ever NFT art, sports, and entertainment marketplace. Nifter will be contracting directly with the sports agents, the A&Rs, the talent agencies, and other talent managers to protect the interest of the artists and their teams. Ever championed for talent, Nifter is vigilant when it comes to protecting the artist's copyrights. You know, everybody who's famous, young or old, wants to cash in on their fame. And the best way to get in touch with the individual is to go to these huge pools, these sporting agents, these talent agencies. They can get in touch with the people. They can make the offer. So this is a great way for them to reach out. And obviously they're doing a lot more than just music now. They're dealing with entertainment and sports as well. And I don't see any other catalysts. Honestly, don't. If I did, I'd have shared it with you. So what can I share with you now? How about the chart? Let's go take a look at that. We're going to be doing our charting on CLIS on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You can get this absolutely free just by signing up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like. So this is a one year, one day chart for CLIS. We got a high here of 12 cents 
and 10,000% down, we hit our low bubble of 0012. Right now, we are at about three cents. She's been under, far under the 200 all this time, has barely managed to get over the 50 occasionally. And today was a rocket day. That is one of the biggest jumps she has had all year. And the technicals, of course, are ripping on the daily, considering she had a great day. Let's look at that six month, four hour. All right, our 200 is falling here. We hit a high bubble of five cents. She fell, came back up, tried to tag over the 50 again and got pushed away hard. And then she actually ran from the 200 right here and for the last month and a half has been doing hardly anything at all until the 24th, until the news came out, that news press we just got done reading. So she was running here and all of our technical show, she still wants to run. Holy cow, our RSI is at 91. Our MACD and our PPO are cousins to each other. MACD works with the price. The PPO works with the percentage of the price. Both of them are tsunamis right now. And our ADX, this is assurance of the trend. This tells me if the trend has changed. Has that changed direction? No. What was the trend? It looks like it's up. Does it want to change? No. So this looks good. This is absolutely great. Coming down to that 20 day, one hour view. All right, you can see the, she is doing nothing but biding time right here. She's waiting for that 200 to get close. And as soon as it got close, she took a stab at it. She tried to get over it, barely snuck over it and got pushed down, fell underneath it. And thank God the news came along to pull her head up over the water and she started to soar. And this is a perfect picture here, folks. Our SMAs are in the perfect order, lined up nicely, nice even gaps between them. All of our technicals are screaming. Everything is on the upsurge. If all your oscillators are pointing up, we are in good position. Five day, five minute. All right, so we had our nice, slow, gradual gain, even continued to into this morning. It wasn't until a quarter to 10 she started to run. She hit her high here at five minutes after 10. That's 20 minutes. She started the morning off here at just a little over a penny and went up to three and a half cents. So you're looking at over 300% gains on her high. And she took it when she really started was 20 minutes. But basically you had a half hour to play that and then she fell away. And that's what I do, folks. I consider a play up to 10, a whole separate play of the day. Anything I get in at the bell, I'm gonna be out of normally before 10. Because the whole market, most everything, takes a break, a pause, a hiccup, right there at 10, 10.05, and it decides what's it gonna do. It tosses the coin, and you know what? I don't wanna be there for the coin cost the coin toss, <laughs> the coin toss. So I get out before 10 and I just take that gain and I don't worry if it continues running. I'm just happy with my gain because you can do that over and over again because normally you don't get a change of direction until that 10, 10 05. Not always, but the probabilities are with you. And there you go. 10, 10 05, this thing fell from, uh, let, just call it 35 down to 17. That's 50% right there we lost. Fell all the way down here. Looked like it was saved by our 20-day SMA. It rode that for a long time. And then out of nowhere, it broke through the 20 and tagged the 50. Even looks like it went below the 50. That's not a good sign. That's a sign that you gotta watch. The floor is getting weak. And here, boom, everything came down and retested that 50 and she's bouncing. Is she bouncing off of it or is this just the test? Are there gonna be many more bounces to come? We have got a 200 day that just came into the picture. Now that scares the life out of me because I see like eight out of 10 stocks when a new SMA comes on the board, the price runs to it like a kid to a puppy. Just gotta go over there and pet it. It may leave it after then, but up to that point, it looks all scary. Now that's great if the SMA is up here but not when it's way down there, for goodness sakes. We are basically down to exactly where the surge started, so we don't want it to come down there. What do our technicals say? Well, our PPO shows a hint of wanting to rise. It is above the pink. It is above the signal line. So it's not bad, but it's not showing a whole lot of promise. Our uh, ADX, well, it's going through some flux right now because of all of this. There's been a lot of ups and downs right now, and it's kind of tough to read. We do have a promise here. 
Our MACD is about ready to cross over, and that shows a push up. I do like that. And our RSI, it's at 55, you know, and at 60 is when change starts to occur. She's on the cusp. She's testing. That's what's going on with this right now. She is testing. She had a huge gain here. People took their money. You can't blame them. It went from just over a penny to 0 0.035. That's over 300% gains. And she lost it. Oh, I mean, she lost a very big portion of it here. But she did end the day at 147% gains. Do I think it's going to continue? I think the coin is in the air. I think it's flipping. She has had three days of gain from that news. But you do see she moves on news. So you're going to want to keep CLIS in your watch list, even on your news watch list. That means to search for news in the morning for this company. You find stocks that always seem to jump on news. You want to find the news first, not see the chart after the news came out. CLIS, it's worth your time. This next stock is probably going to be striking a familiar note in your head. You're going to go, where have I heard of this before? This is ticker ARSND. Now that D on the end is a temporary fixture. It means that the company's going through changes right now. And you never know what those changes are unless you go do your research into their filings. They'll tell you everything in the filings, which really is why this company is moving right now. They just came out with a filing just a couple of days ago about a deal they made at the beginning of the month. And there's a lot in there and I think things are settling right now and now is a good time to look at it. I think this is under the radar and I think it's going to pop. Now, one of the things they've already done is to change their name, Yuling's Ice Cream Corporation. And they finished the day today at 0 0.0149, almost a penny and a half with about 35% gains. They're on the pink tier, they're current, they've got a transfer agent verified, but they don't yet have a verified profile. But everything is settling right now, so I wouldn't take that to heart quite yet. Now, they tell us here the company's original name was Aureus Inc., and they were a food brand development company focused on acquiring and growing well-established food brands. Our first acquisition is Yuling's Ice Cream Core, developed by an American businessman, Frank D. Yuling, as a dairy business to help support the Yuling family brewery during the 1920s Prohibition period. That's where most of you probably know the Yuling name from. You've probably seen it in the grocery store. This beer is very popular. Not a beer, it's a lager. They've been making this for over 100 years, but when Prohibition came along, they could not make it legally. And unlike some families, they didn't just keep making it and selling it under the table. They stopped and started selling ice cream. And ice cream got very popular. As a matter of fact, when Prohibition was over, they didn't stop making ice cream. They just started making their laggers again. And they made both all the way up until 1985. Then they quit making the ice cream. Broke a lot of people's hearts, folks. Let me tell you what. Yuling's ice cream was famous. Well, here in just the last month, this company went ahead and bought it from that family. And it is now theirs. They bought everything. The secret recipes. You know, it's theirs now. And they have been moving it off into the stores. Now, the financials don't reflect anything right now because it's a new business and everything is still settling. We haven't seen the financials or all of the other filings that are going to be coming out. The news presses that are going to come out. And that's why I think it's a good time to look at it. We are getting ready for the party to start. Now, they have a second branch to their business. They are working in micro markets. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with what a micro market is. This is very, very popular with employers, people who have to eat on the premises. These are stores, if you will, without people. It's all automated. You don't just have vending machines. You actually have your drinks, your chips, your cookies, but they're bringing in fresh foods, fruits, uh, salads, sandwiches. They're bringing in a lot of stuff and there are no people here. They just keep it stocked up and you work on the honor system. You have a touchless pay. Now, of course, they've got security. They're watching you. And, you know, most people don't want to risk their job stealing a bag of chips. So it's not a big issue. But these are also becoming popular outside of businesses, just in small neighborhoods. Now, the great thing about this business is, is that this company will come to the employer's place and set it all up at no cost to them. They'll bring in hundreds of products for their employees at no cost to them. Yet yeah, they're going to make some money and this company's going to make some money. So it's been very, very popular. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, if I can find my mouse, <laughs> 
Wow. See? Under the radar. She normally does just over 100,000 shares. Today, she did not even double that. Just over 200,000 shares. Folks, this thing is going to be hitting a million shares. No doubt, because people know that name, Yulang. And once it gets out into the public, once they change their ticker, I think it's going to be a big deal. What is the share structure on this company? Oh, please, please be a low float. Oh, yeah. Boom. 13.5 million shares. Oh, wow. Management doesn't have anything. Restricted shares, zero. I got to figure that's going to be one of the things that's going to change. And they've got 2.5 billion shares that they could put out on the market. Or they could just make deals with companies. You know, they could buy other food brands by giving them lots of shares in this company. So right now, our share count is at 13.3 million. Financials, well, the company's not making anything right now. I don't know what business they were doing before now, but they were making a little and it was getting less and less until we're just down to zero. And now we've got a new business and the financials have not come out. And I can tell you for sure that Ulings is in stores. They're in Walmarts, they're in Weisses, they're in 600 independent stores right now. So they are making money. It's just not on the books yet. It's coming. And that's one of the catalysts, right? Now, disclosures. And this is where all the information actually comes from. They've got an 8K here, pops up. There we go. This came out on the 12th. Gee whiz, so you're talking almost 15 days ago. But this is what it said. August 5th, 2022, FINRA announced three corporate actions for Ewling's Ice Cream Corporation. The first corporate action of the company was a reverse stock split of a ratio of 1 for 150. Now, they've already done that. It was taken care of on the 8th, so the reverse split has already occurred. The second corporate action of the company was a name change from Aureus Inc. to Yuling Ice Cream Corporation. That's been done. All the settling is settling. The third corporate action of the company was a stock symbol change from ARSN, and they don't even have a ticker picture. They have not picked one out. They just said it will take 20 days that they're going to run with this ticker ARSND from August 8th from the time they did the reverse split, which is actually the 28th. That should be, well, you can't be Sunday, Monday. I would expect Monday that they're going to have a new ticker and she could get some business. So I keep my eye out because everything is settling now. The ticker will change. The name has changed. The reverse split has already occurred. It's a new business now. And now all we need are those financials. Once those financials come out, we'll see how much money they've been making over at Walmarts and Weisses and those 600 independent stores that they're already at right now. So we've got two charts up because when you're looking at a stock that's changed its ticker, you got to look at the old ticker and the new ticker to get the full picture, bring them both together. So we got ARSN and ARSND up on the board right now. Now, most of the history with the old company doesn't matter because it was the old company. It was whatever they were doing then and it really has nothing to do with what's going on now. But I am always curious to see how things were hanging just before everything changed. And it looks to me like they were pretty bleak. Well, we're down here in the trips, trip six and trip five, and then it fell. And I got to presume that's when they probably started talking about doing their reverse split. And everybody hated that. And everybody sold off and we're down here at triple zero two. And then after the reverse split, don't know how it happened. Don't know if it was bid up or if it was just a stock, but we ended up at four and a half cents from triple zero two up to four and a half cents. And she gave most of that away. She fell right down here to just over a penny, just over a penny. And for the last, what, uh, 10, 12 days, she's been settling. That's exactly what she's been doing. While everything has been being taken care of, not a whole lot's been happening. Here comes our 50-day SMA, new on the block, had to touch it. And look, look, our baby teeth here have just turned into adult teeth. Jumped on top of the 50 and those price bars got really big. And when the 200-day SMA comes up, we'll get tusks. We'll get this big, big bars. Our technicals look great, folks. We got a crossover on the PPO. That is definitely promising. Our ADX shows no change in direction. Where she's been climbing for the last two and a half days, there's been no change. It should continue climbing. It's not what direction this is pointing that's important. It's if it's change direction. Our MACD is great. 
She is just now crossing the signal line and look at our three big green bars getting bigger and our RSI has just approached the overbought. This looks really good on the hourly. It does look strong. Five day, five minute on ARSND. So we had a little bit of growth two days ago, some nice growth yesterday hitting the 20. She kind of fell halfway through today and then she took off. And once she got over that 50, look at the size of those bars and that's five minute right there. So it jumped here from uh, just a smidge over one cent, 0 0.0107 up to a penny and a half. So that is about 50% gains right there in 10 minutes. Technicals are very strong. Overbought, MACD, we got a tsunami crossing the signal line. That is a straight line. Direction on our trend is not changing. We got a crossover on the PPO. It looks outstanding, folks. This looks like it wants to continue running. It absolutely does. Now, we didn't get a lot of volume today, did we? No, 200,000 shares. And she's only got 13.5 million. I get the feeling this is under the radar. I would put ARSND on your watch list, but hey, Here's the thing, it isn't going to remain ARSND. It's going to change to a new ticker. And sometimes they don't write these PRs properly and you don't get both tickers in the PR. If they just go telling you we've changed our ticker and they tell you what the new ticker is without telling you the old, it could be a problem. So keep the word Yingling Ice Cream Corporation as your key word. That'll give you the ticker. Look for it every day or just come to the OTC markets and look under filings. See if a new 8K comes out and the ticker's changed, but you'll probably see it, right? All right, you get my drift. I like this company. I like their ice cream. If you tried it, it is good. All righty then. Let's get down to this last ticker, GGII, Green Globe International. She has been a buzzing online this last week. The price, it's gone up about a thousand percent in the last four days. She's got a catalyst, a big one. She's got an event happening this Tuesday, August 30th. But what is most interesting and frustrating is there are no new news presses to tell me about it. I couldn't find any current filings. Where did I get all my information then? Twitter. Yeah, everything came from Twitter. I don't know where they're getting their information and it frustrates me, but I am really, really glad it's there. And I'm gonna share that all with you here in just a second. So GGII today finished the day at about a penny and a half at 0 0.0135 with over 110% gains. She's on the pink tier, she is current, she's got a verified profile and transfer agent, looks good, and she's got independent directors, so maybe they're contemplating uplisting themselves. So GGII and Hempaco are both in the hemp industry. Both companies are working together to disrupt the tobacco industry. They're creating hemp cigarettes, CBD cigarettes, CBG cigarettes, all sorts of cigarettes that do not have nicotine in them. Not that I think nicotine is the problem. It's all that tar and carcinogens and chemicals, not the nicotine. But in either case, that is their business. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Pretty bloody good, actually. They normally do about 29 million shares a day. That ain't chump change, but today she exploded to almost a half a billion shares, jumping from 29 million to 448 million. That is a huge increase. You can't deny that the investors are paying a lot of attention to this stock right now. Share structure, we're hoping for a low float. Eee, so much for hoping. No, we got a huge float, 3.2 billion shares. The only good news I can see here is that the insiders, the management, own a ton. They've got 51 billion shares. Hopefully that's a sign of some serious belief in this company. What are the financials for this company? Well, looking at the annuals, remembering to take those three zeros and putting them behind any of the numbers down here. At the end of 2021, the company did about $1.2 million for the whole year and they got to keep $336,000. But what's curious is when you look at their quarterly, the first three months of this year, they made more money than they did the whole year last year, $1.4 million. But what's strange is they only got to keep $24,000 out of 1.4 million. Whatever equation they're working with right now, they do need to tweak that, absolutely. What are the disclosures for the company? All right. 
Now, I could not find any new disclosures talking about this event coming out on the 30th. We've got their financials here and they're all current, but there's no 8K here and that's really what I need. And down here is where the 8K would be, but these all stopped in 2010. So I just got lucky finding it on Twitter. I don't know where they found it, but I'm glad they did. Let's take a look at that news. Now we can glean a lot of information from these news presses. The problem is they just don't have a lot of current news. We've only got four news presses for the entire year of 2022. And the last one came out four months ago. Not one news press here about this event that's going to happen on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what that is here in just a second. But this is where I would expect it. Why wouldn't they put out a news press about this? It is big news. But they do have lots of information here. We're not going to actually jump into any of these news presses, but I do want to glance over the headlines so you can see what they've been doing over the last year. They have not been idle. It was all the way back in June of last year that Hempaco announced the completion of the reverse merger with Green Globe International. And from there, they just started making deals. Short time later, Hempaco launched Calavives Delta 8.com and they signed a joint venture agreement to launch it and they got 50% ownership in that deal. And then GGI surprisingly took off 20 billion shares off of the outstanding share count. So if you thought there was a lot of shares now, there was a ton more then. So they raced 20 billion shares last year. Another deal Hempaco made, they partnered with Pelican Group to roll out hemp boxes nationwide. Hemp boxes are actually vending machines that sell their CBD and hemp tobacco products. And they've got about 600 of these already out there. Then Hemp Box made their own deal. Hemp Box Vending partners with industry giant Suzohap to roll out the hemp boxes across the country. Uh, then Hempaco announced a marketing agreement with Neighborhood Market Association. Now this piece of news I found very interesting. GGI signed a letter of intent to acquire the patent to make marijuana paper. Now I haven't seen a news press saying that they've actually acquired the patent yet, but they're looking to get a hold of it. And it's a big patent. First off, it's going to give them the right to make all rolling papers and blunt wraps out of marijuana, not hemp, marijuana. Marijuana has all the THC in it. Hemp just has a smidge, but they've got this marijuana paper that they want to make rolling papers and blunt wraps out of and anybody else who sells them is going to have to pay them royalties but they go on to say that this marijuana paper can be used for any kind of paper which really is opening up the door for things we may not be aware of right now this patent could go a lot farther than we think uh, then in august of last year hempaco licenses hemp cigarette manufacturing technology to another company cbd cigarette company and another deal, cannabis startup Stick It signs a joint venture agreement with Hempaco, which is a division of Green Globe. They're going to be making 10 million CBD sticks per month. Wow, 10 million a month. Hemp Box, a wholly owned subsidiary of Green Globe International, enters into partnership with High Street CBD. I got to believe that's in the UK. Every city has a high street. That's where all the stores are at. And then the very first piece of news for this year, Green Globe International Inc. and Curated Nutra LLC announce a joint venture. So as you can see, they're doing a lot of things. They got a lot of companies they're pulling in, a lot of deals that they're making. But what is the big deal that's happening right now? What's going to happen Tuesday? All right, fair enough. You've been patient. So this is really what it's all about right here. We're over here at Twitter. This is where I got most of my information. This is actually where I found the 8K. This 8K came out on the 22nd and it's not over at the OTC markets. Very frustrating. So here's the bottom line, folks. Hempaco is being spun out onto the NASDAQ as its own company on Tuesday, August 30th, and they're only selling 1 million shares. No warrants for dilution down the road. That is it, 1 million shares. Super duper ridiculously low float on IPOs usually has the stock going to the moon. Today is a great example. Jay-Z IPO today. Don't think the price was any more than $10 a share. It went over $180 today. Their float, $3.5 million.
Now, it is completely in a different sector. Jay-Z was a Chinese educational stock. We had a couple other Chinese stocks in the last month that came on with super low floats, no warrants, which isn't normal. That's not the way IPOs are normally done. But the Chinese started doing this and every single one of these IPOs are running. Whether it be hundreds of dollars or literally thousands of dollars, these things are running. So now we've got a company completely in a different sector, cannabis, that's going to try this trick. Come onto the market with a super low float and see if we can get this bad boy to run. And with a million shares, I think it will, folks. I think this will run. Now, one of the important pieces of information we got from the 8k was that when this is all done and over with the public is going to own 4.3 percent of the shares and the management is going to own almost 80 percent of all the shares this is just like ggii we get 3.5 billion in the float they get 51 billion in the restricted shares they want to hold it they are invested heavily in this company because they believe in it now, I got to tell you folks, chances are you're not going to be able to get into this at no bloody $6. You'll probably never see that price on Tuesday. Nah, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I think what occurs here is that people are buying on market orders. You can buy limit, right? You put in the price and you hope your price comes up. But if you put in $8 and the price comes in at $12 as soon as the bell rings, you're out of the game. You're going to have to clear that and try to get in a price higher than 12, but hey, it's running, isn't it? So you got to get your price way the heck up there. Or you can buy at market, which is a crapshoot. It is a crapshoot. You don't know what price you're going to pay for those, but I think that's what causes the stock to rise so fast. As soon as it comes on the market, it's at $30 because somebody had a market order in there and there were people who had prices in. Well, it will go to the very top price and grab it. And then the next person has a market order and it jumps it again. And all these market orders just push it up and up. I don't know that's the case, but I do know the chances of you getting in for $6 are probably nil. So you're going to have to be at a much higher price. Remember, you don't have to buy a ton of them. If you're lucky to get 10 shares and they go from, well, maybe you bought them at $15, $20 each, but they go to 200 bucks. You've made a real good profit. It's not about how many shares you own. It's about the percentage of gains. And when you only have a million shares in the float, what? You sell a million shares, you know, volume, you've sold every single share. If you sell 10 million shares on Tuesday, that means the float has to sell through 10 times. That means people have to let it go who just bought it today. And that's where you get supply and demand issues. That's where you could really get a price to go crazy. We just haven't seen this tactic of a low float IPO on a cannabis stock before. So this is going to be the first time we've ever seen this. All right, I'm interested in seeing this chart. Are you? Good. Let's go take a look at it. So we've jumped on back to TOS to take a gander at Green Globe. This is the six-month, four-hour chart. Now, we are looking at GGII, but we're actually discussing Hempaco, right? Ticker HPCO. That is the ticker that will go live on Tuesday. Now, there's a few things we haven't discussed that we need to consider. And the reason I haven't brought it up is, well, there isn't any information online about it. And there should have been by now. First off, this spin out of Hempaco from Green Globe qualifies for dividends. Anybody that holds shares in GGII is going to get dividends of Hempaco for free. That's just the way it works. But there is no news out there about this. I don't know what the ratio is, how many shares of Hempaco you'll get for how many shares of GGII. They don't even give us an X date, a cutoff date. What is the very last day that I can buy shares of GGII that will qualify for the free dividend shares of Hempaco? That's normally seven days to 30 days before the IPO, not after. It's always before the fact, and I haven't seen that yet. And I'm guessing that most of these people buying shares right now are presuming they're going to get free dividend shares for all the shares they're buying. I wouldn't think so, but I don't know for sure. Now, here's the other consideration. They've only got a million shares for Hempaco. That's what they're going to sell. That's all that they have. 
Well, when you give dividends out to the parent company shareholders, it comes from the float of the spin out. They've only got a million shares. There is not enough shares there to pass out for dividends. So there's a very strong likelihood that they could do a forward split after the IPO. It is possible. They're going to have to come up with these shares from somewhere to give to all the shareholders of GGII. So initially, you're going to have a 1 million float, I'm guessing, on the day they IPO and it's going to rocket. Then it's going to come down, who knows where, it's going to lose a lot. And then they could, if they're at a decent price, do a forward split. And that is going to change the whole game. So those are things to consider. So let's take a look at GGII here. We do have a six month, four hour chart. She has been running downhill very slowly. She hit a low bubble here of double zero one. And just a couple days ago, she was almost there again, double zero one one. But it was the last couple of days that have made all the difference. She has been zooming to the moon. She did start down here at double zero one and is now over 1,300% up in two days. Let's take a look at the 20 day, one hour view. There's just absolutely nothing going on here. No love at all. And we've actually got three days of run you can see here. She started to pull away three days ago, got a good jump yesterday, and today she skyrocketed. And look at those technicals, folks. Everything is out of the atmosphere. Everything is in space right now. Our RSI is at 96. MACD and PPO are definitely going to the moon, and there is no change in direction there. That thing looks like it's still going up. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. God, she's looking great, folks. She is coasting over the 50 day SMA. You can see she got close right here. She got close right there. It looks like she's actually riding on the 20 day. The 50 day is backing up the 20. Yeah, I would say she's hanging on to the 20 more than the 50. All of our SMAs are scooping up nicely. We can see our volume is getting stronger. Our technicals, our technicals are strong, looking really good on the five minute. I'm surprised by that. So I would consider GGII to have another day of run, absolutely. I think maybe on Tuesday, you could see everybody turn their heads to Empaco and GGII not get any love that day. But I get the feeling, since there isn't any news saying when the X date was, that Monday, people are going to think, this is my last chance to get these shares before the IPO, and I'm going to get those free dividends. And I think it's going to run. That's just a feeling, folks. So I would keep my eye on GGII for Monday and then Hempaco on Tuesday. But remember, it is going to be flying. And just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here, folks, let me show you JZ. JZ is the Chinese education company that IPO today. And the price was roughly $10 to $12 a share to start. Now, we are looking at a one-minute chart. As soon as the bell went off, she came on the market, and she was already at $125. She was being pre-bid, pre-market. So by the time the bell went off, the battle was already ensuing. Now, you may have wanted to buy this on a limit order. You could have put in $20, $30, $40, $50, $60 dollars a share, and you would have been rejected. Didn't even come close to you. If you had put in $200 and said, eh, I'll go market order. I figure it'll probably be about $20. I'll end up with 10 shares. Eh, not exactly. Your $200 bucks got you one share for $125. And over the next 45 minutes, it hit $186. So you walked away with a good profit even with just one share. Now it is strange because I am on the one minute chart and that is at the bell. We have one, two, three, four bars, which is only four minutes, but this bar is already at 17 minutes after 10. So there was some dead time in between here, believe it or not. And then she fell away and we are all the way back down here to $15. But you can see how fast it can run at the bell, even before the bell. So those are three stocks, in my opinion, I think we should be watching. Ticker CLIS, working with Nifter and their NFTs. Now, NFTs are huge. Last year alone, they did over $20 billion worth of business. And this company was strictly working with music, but now they have gone out further. They are working with talent agencies, sports agents, and they have access to pools of celebrities and famous people that they can start doing business with.
Then you got ARSND, Euling Ice Cream. They're settling right now, folks. They are right at the point of a breakout on the charts. They've already changed their name. They've already had the reverse split, and the ticker should be done on Monday. Seriously, folks, I would keep my eye on Euling. I think she probably has some secret admirers that are going to push this stock. And last was GGII, has had a huge run over the last three days, over 1,300%, and I expect she's probably going to run on Monday too. But Tuesday, her subsidiary, Hempaco, spins out under ticker HPCO. I think GGII will probably dip on that day. I could be wrong, but I think Hempaco is going to run like crazy. Good luck getting in. I hope you really do. Remember, folks, don't just trust everything I say. Back up what I say with your own DD. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.